So, uh, so far I, I began from um, the problem of Eurocentrism that how uh, we need to kind of overcome it in order to be able to reflect on the future of the Middle East. Um, I, tried to, I, I tried to show where Eurocentrism comes from, which in my view comes from internalism. And I showed how uh, Trotsky's idea of uneven and combined development involves an interactive conception of social and historical change, which is therefore intrinsically kind of resistant against uh, any form of ethnocentrism, including Eurocentrism. Um, so now to, to come back therefore to our kind of starting question about the future of the Middle East. I would not delve into particular predictions for particular countries. After all, Middle East is uneven. There are many, diff many different countries of different uh, developmental patterns and so on. Um, what I would like to end this lecture with is, is to, to say something on the broad attributes of the kind of approach we uh, if, we, if we choose to use the idea of an even combined development to adopt in order to kind of identify broad trends and, and, and tendencies. So we have to take the unevenness obviously as our starting point and, and seriously. So depending on whether we are starting looking at their whole region or a particular country, we need to identify the um, kind of dominant um, patterns and relations of unevenness. And I think here, um, the fact that the Middle East as a whole and each country also individually is implicated in a global system of capitalist uh, production is important. Uh, and that how uh, internal contradictions of capitalist uh, system itself kind of bears on each country which is involved in it. But this is a kind of systemic observation of the way in which international um, circumstances affect um, internal dynamics of each country. The second aspect of this international um, kind of uh, condition, which we have to take into account in, in reflecting on the future is the specific international relations which each entity under investigation has. So for example, um, if you look at Iran, uh, we have to look at key lines of interactive development, uh, which kind of connects Iran to the outside world, basically. Uh, and this, obviously in the case of Iran, you know, relations with countries like China and Russia, but also with, with the United States, um, its regional kind of um, uh, alliances and alignment and so on and so forth. And then track the, the ways in which these external kind of relations um, affects not only internal developments in Iran, but also how aspects of external patterns of development is grafted upon and incorporated into particular form of political and, and economic and, and social and cultural configurations within Iran. So for example, Iran's, um, you know, being under US sanctions, having this um, hostile relation with the United States has led to uh, what, you know, the uh, leader of Iran calls resistance economy. Now, resistance economy involves particular kind of uh, modification and configuration of uh, economic relations within Iranian society and so on. And the, the point about uneven and combined development is that those, those particular patterns cannot be explained by reference to what is um, you know, inside Iran alone. And so once you identify external uh, lines of um, kind of causal relations uh, and internal forms of constitutive uh, combined development, then um, I think one can better um, 
foresee, um, not foresee, but to, to reflect on, on the likely direction of, of, of change. Um, so I think if, if I want to summarize all this is that social change is always international. An international system and change is, has always a social dimension to it. And these two are like dialectically related. This is, I mean, you might say this is obviously obvious, but the reality is that few social theories actually consider uh, international as constitutive of the social. They do not reject uh, the fact that international circumstances and international factors have a role to play in inside internal development, but this is always a secondary, a contingent kind of uh, role and Primacy is always given to internal patterns, whether it's class formation or cultural practices or ideological tendencies or um, political kind of um, agency and so on. Similarly, in international relations, the mainstream at least are basically, you know, have nothing to do with internal social structures. So for example, realism argues that, you know, irrespective of internal structures of different societies, every state acts in a similar way when it comes to international uh, arena, um, <clears throat> because they are all affected by kind of same structural kind of uh, circumstances. Um, now, I initially mentioned, you know, the, 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 the implication in global capitalist system. And I think here is one important point to bear in mind in any analysis based on an even and combined development uh, with respect to the Middle East. And that's the fact that um, the post um, Second World War uh, world order, liberal international world order uh, led and kind of initiated by the United States is crumbling and, and is, is declining. And we see that obviously in, in, in isolationism of the United States under um, since at least uh, Obama, uh, the way in which the United States is kind of withdrawing from the Middle East, focusing on the Far East, and that the fact that the United States even feels compelled to confront China already indicates that the relative power of the United States versus a country like China is changing. And so this kind of um, geopolitical vacuum which United States departure from the Middle East has created uh, has kind of affected every single uh, country in the region and everyone is adopting this to these new circumstances and in you know all transitional phases in in historical uh, processes are particularly unstable and open to possibilities uh, of various forms of uh, radical change so I guess um, if, if I want to end this um, lecture on prospects of the Middle East, um, I think uh, counterintuitively to have a better understanding of the future of the Middle East, we should step out of the Middle East, uh, initially at least at theoretical level, and uh, have a um, have an internationally sensitive social theory, uh, which um, uneven and combined development represents. Uh, I'm not saying that uneven and combined development is the only uh, form of social theory which takes international relations seriously and incorporates it into its categories, but it's the one which I think um, its ambition for this is much more articulate, uh, explicitly articulated and there is a kind of coherent literature on it. Um, if you want uh, to see much more concrete uh, analysis based on uneven and combined development, I would refer you to my writings, um, my book on uh, you know, um, Iran's experience of modernity or my work on ISIS, the origins of ISIS in Iraq, or uh, my, 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 star, my, my publications on, on the Kurdish question. But I wanted to use this particular lecture to really flesh out the theoretical perspective, which in my view, one has to uh, deploy in order to avoid um, both Eurocentrism, but also um, 
cultural essentialism, which is actually quite powerful in area studies and especially in Iranian studies, uh, which is always, you know, uh, kind of uh, marked by this implicit, if not explicit, idea of Iranian exceptionalism, which I think is largely because you know, uh, classical social theories are, have been unable to make sense of patterns of development in Iran. And therefore, um, people, instead of kind of trying to reform those classical theories and seek the problem in them, they have tried to exceptionalize Iran in order to leave those social, classical social theories intact, uh, something which I have tried to do the, 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 the kind of the opposite in, in my work, especially in the book I mentioned. Anyway, um, uh, I hope you find this, um, this lecture useful and uh, I thank you for your attention. Thanks. Mm -hmm.